vehicle in the garage today is a 1997 GMC Jimmy with a 4.3 W engine and just over 126,000 miles on it. The owner is complaining it has misfires, poor fuel economy, and a lack of power. The catalytic converter has already been replaced by another shop. Our first step was to check the misfire clean with our scan tool. Look at that, all the misfires are coming from the first bank. It looks like cylinder number five is having the most problems. Now let's take a look at the fuel trim. It looks like bank one is lean. The computer is adding 25% more fuel. Here are the post catalytic converter five gas readings. Notice the CO or carbon monoxide. We are getting a reading of around 5%. It is a reading which means the engine is running rich. Now, take a look at the CO2 or carbon dioxide readings. It is reading low, which means the fuel efficiency is poor. Look at the HC or hydrocarbons. This number continues to climb, which means even though we have a new catalytic converter, this vehicle is expelling an enormous amount of raw fuel out the tailpipe. It looks like we have a fuel problem with too much fuel entering the combustion chamber. To be sure it was not a spark issue, we connected a timing light to number five cylinder. The light is flashing properly. We also swapped the plugs and inspected the wires for arcing. With the same results, everything is working properly. We definitely have a fuel delivery problem. Either the computer is holding an injector open too long or the injector itself is sticking open. The fuel injection system on this vehicle does not allow for easy access to individually firing of the injectors. Our next step was to check the injector firing from the computer with a noid light through the connector to the injector assembly. All looks good here. Then we smoked the intake for a vacuum leak. We didn't find any vacuum leaks, but we did find the lower intake was leaking antifreeze. We need to replace the injector assembly as well as the lower intake gaskets. The first step is to remove the throttle body cables and the electrical connections. The distributor will need to be removed to get the lower intake out. Before removing the distributor, mark its position and the rotor direction in two places. Mark the distributor housing position on the intake and firewall if possible. Also mark where the rotor is pointing when the distributor gear is first free. This will give a good starting position to point the rotor when it is reinstalled. Remove all lower intake bolts, hoses, and move the air conditioning compressor to the side. Use a pry bar to lift the intake and remove it from the engine block. Now you can easily see the deterioration of the gaskets. Next, remove the upper intake bolts and place them on the bench. These bolts must be replaced in the same position they were removed from. Be sure to arrange them for easy installation. Remove the upper intake to expose the injector assembly. Remove the injectors and observe all the carbon in there. This engine has been misfiring for a long time. This explains why the catalytic converter was replaced. A single-sided razor works well to remove the remaining gaskets. When replacing the injectors, be sure to match the injector number on the injector body to the number on the intake. Then simply insert the injector into the appropriate hole. Turn the injector connectors to prevent plenum contact. Don't forget the top O-ring on the body. To ease plenum replacement, lube this O-ring. Replace the upper plenum gasket and install. Then replace the bolts in the proper position and torque to specifications. There is no specific sequence for the upper plenum, but we suggest starting at the middle and crisscrossing while moving to the ends. The first torque pass is 44 inch-pounds and the second is to 89 inch-pounds. 
Clean the old gaskets from the intake valley on the engine and apply a sealant on the front and rear valley contact points. Line up the new gasket mounting dowels to the holes in the head and replace the gaskets, then install the intake manifold. Replace the bolts and torque to specifications. This is done in three passes. The first is to 50 inch pounds, second is to 100 inch pounds, and third is to 132 inch pounds, which by the way is equal to 11 foot pounds. This bolt torque must also be done in the correct sequence as in the diagram. Look at the contact blade of the rotor. This is a sign of high secondary resistance in this system. We will replace the plugs and check ignition wires before startup. The fins on the bottom of the rotor are there to increase ventilation through the distributor. There are two vent holes in the bottom of the distributor housing. These are restricted and must be cleared. Restricted vents will cause high secondary resistance. Elongate the distributor mounting hole slightly to allow a minor adjustment before installation. Before installing the distributor, align the slotted oil pump drive to match this slot in the bottom of the distributor. Use a long flat screwdriver to do this. Insert the distributor and align the rotor and the housing to the marks you made earlier. Do not over tighten the distributor cap hold down bolts into the plastic distributor. Distributor damage can occur when over tightened. We replace the remainder of the components and change the oil. Look at the fuel and the antifreeze that first drains from the pan. Changing the oil is an extremely important step in completing a job like this. After the engine is running, set the distributor cam retard to zero. This must be done with a capable scan tool. Look at that. No more misfires on any cylinders. The O2 sensors are functioning properly. Here is the five gas data compared to our post regular readings. The CO is done to 0.64% and the CO2 is up to 13.46% and the HC has dramatically dropped. Looks like we're all set here. See you next time in the Wells Garage.